We thank you for your presence in our midst, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us of your love for us, oh God. We thank you for all that you have done, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that we have heard today. We want to bring this praise report in your presence, oh God. And we want to declare that every one of us who has given a testimony of what has happened in their life, we want to declare that it is you, O oh Lord, who has done it, O oh God. And for that reason, Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the glory, Abba Father. We give you all the glory and the praises, Jehovah, for it is you who has done this, O oh Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for everything that he has done uh, because it is not because we know how to pray. Amen. amen. It's not because we know how to to pray it's not because we give a lot it's not because uh we have connections amen it is not because of which family you come from all those testimonies that we have heard here it is because of the love of god amen and nobody can take pride in it nobody can boast and say it's because of my hard work Amen. It has taken the mercies of God. It has taken the grace of God. We thank the Lord for this opportunity even to share the word of God today. I just turn to your neighbor and just tell them Merry Christmas. I don't think it's late to say that. Just tell them Merry Christmas. As we welcome our viewers who are watching us online on Facebook and those who are watching us live on, on YouTube. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. And uh, we have been speaking about Jesus. I have been preaching Jesus and I'll continue preaching Jesus today. Amen. And I uh, want us to read the word of God from the book of Matthew. Uh, this word I shared this morning on uh, Jumbo Radio Network in Kikuyu language. Uh, for those who are able to log in this morning, I shared this word and I believe that this word as it comes forth to you, it is going to come with more power. It's going to come with a new revelation. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Uh, you're not going to miss Matthew because it's the first book of the New Testament. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Matthew chapter 1. And I want you to take time and read from verse 1 all the way to verse 17. You're going to read that at your own time. But I want to read from verse 18. I'm going to read from verse 18. Everybody in Matthew right now? Yeah. Say a big amen if you're there. Amen. amen. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on, on, on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being just being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, uh, Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Excuse me. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took and took unto him his wife, and he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Amen. I want to speak about Jesus and how his birth came about. Uh, if you if you read the book of Luke, there is an account of how the angel visited Mary and how Mary was told that this is what is the plan of God concerning you. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you shall conceive and you shall give birth to a son. 
And Mary wondered, how can it be? And the and then she get, she came to a point of saying, let your will be done. Let it be done unto me according to your purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. And today as we speak about Jesus, I want us to understand about the purpose of Jesus. Why was he born? As we, as we celebrate Christmas, why was Jesus born? When we talk about purpose, and it is one of our, four, our most popular saying, here we say that we are serving the purposes of God in our generation. Yeah. Before you come to serve the purpose of God in our generation, you need to understand what is your purpose. Because you can only serve the purpose that you know. Praise the name of the Lord. And what is purpose? Purpose is the reason why someone exists or was created. Purpose is the reason why someone exists and all was created. When we talk about purpose, let me just give an example. What is the purpose of this microphone? The purpose of this microphone is to amplify my voice. Praise the name of the Lord. So when this microphone was being created, the person who designed it, the person who invented the microphone had to understand a need. There was a need for voices to be amplified. So the person saw the need. Praise the name of the Lord. And after seeing the need, he came up with a solution that will solve the problem. The problem being, if I am speaking to a thousand people with my bare voice, it will take nothing short of a miracle for everybody to hear me. And one of the greatest miracles of Jesus' time is that he was able to speak to five thousands, thousands of people and they could hear him. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, I wonder how that could be done. So back to the purpose of the microphone. Amen. I want, I'm giving this example so that we understand when we talk about the purpose of Jesus Christ. Why was Jesus born? Why did he come on earth? So this microphone, the person who designed it, designed it and then tested it and approved and said, wow, this is something good. It is supposed to work well. And then he knew that he cannot be the one to use it. If the person who designed the microphone just kept the microphone in his house, then it would be of no use. Are we together so far? Praise the name of the Lord. So after designing it, he understood that other people will use it. Other people would like to understand how do you turn it on? How do you turn it off? How do you connect it? So what did he do? He put down something we call a manual or a booklet that has instructions. And when you buy this microphone, for you to be able to use it correctly, you need to follow the instructions given by the person who has manufactured this microphone. Are we together so far? Praise the name of the Lord. So back to the purpose. So what is your purpose? Your purpose is the reason why you exist. Your purpose is the reason why you are created. If I take this microphone and I, I use it as a vacuum cleaner, I say, okay, I need to clean here and I just take the microphone and I start vacuuming with it. It can work because that is not the reason and to why it was created. The same case with us. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to apply this now. So, you are created by God. Amen. And when, you, when God was creating you, there was a need for you to be created. There is a purpose. There is a specific purpose which you are supposed to fulfill. Nobody exists without the purpose of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Nobody comes into being without the purpose of God. And God spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. It says that before you were born, I knew you. Before you were in your mother's womb, I am the one who formed you. 
Praise the name of the Lord. It is the Lord who has formed us. It is the Lord who has created us. But he did not just create us so that we may just exist. But he created us for a purpose. Tell your neighbor purpose. purpose. And that purpose is the reason why you are alive today. I don't know whether you understand what is your purpose. I don't know whether you've come to the point of knowing what is your purpose. But how can we know our purpose? We can know our purpose by going through the manual or the instructions that were written by our creator. The word of God. It has every direction. It has every guideline that can help you accomplish your purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. And because we are speaking about Jesus, listen how Jesus came about. So Mary conceived of the Holy Spirit. It was not something that was man, man, man created. It was not something that just came out of nowhere. It was a conception of the Holy Spirit. And as you speak about Jesus, I also want you to understand that whatever is in you, because when you are created for that purpose, there are some things, there are potentials, there are abilities, there are talents, there are gifts that God put in you so that you may be able to fulfill that purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why you find that you have some temperaments that are not in other people. Amen. And come to think about it, uh, uh, the other day we saw the, um, that, that Kenya uh, had the first, I think, 21 position in Singapore, the marathon. Yeah, Kenyans had like, well, number one up to 21 were Kenyans in the marathon. Yeah? Yeah, yeah Kenyans. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Those people who have been born in that tribe they are gifted they have the ability to run the, the, the marathon, the, the long races it is in them amen, amen. it is in yeah. it is in them whatever we need to fulfill the purpose of God is in us you're not going to look for it out there it is in us so Mary was designed to carry forth, to bring forth Jesus. Her purpose was to become the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it was not by her own effort. The spirit of the Lord rested upon her as she conceived. So I want you to understand that the birth of Jesus was by the Holy Spirit. Mary conceived by the Holy Spirit. Go with me. So that we get to where I want us to get. So listen, now Mary is here. If you read the book of Luke, I want you to go and just, I, we, we decided last week that we are going to read the Gospels. Have, have you been doing it? The Gospels so that we understand what would Jesus do? I hope you've been doing that. Amen. So we, we find that Mary now is, is, has conceived, is pregnant. And she goes to Elizabeth, her cousin. And she gets comfort. She gets encouragement. But then Joseph, her, 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 her betrothed husband, discovers that she is pregnant. And where we have read here, the Bible says that he thought he was a righteous man. He feared the Lord. And not only fearing the Lord, I understood that he also loved this lady. Because instead of deciding to shame her out publicly and tell people, oh, I even don't know how she got pregnant, oh, and I shame her publicly, Joseph thought within himself, the best thing I'm going to do, I am going to leave her quietly. I am going to put aside her aside quietly. I am not going to shame her. And the Bible says that he did not speak to somebody. What was he doing? He was thinking. Praise the name of the Lord. But listen, when we talk about the purpose of Jesus and the purpose of the Lord, when we talk about the purpose of the Lord, the Lord is in control from the beginning to the end. 
And I want you to understand that. That the Lord is in control of your life from the beginning to the end. So when Joseph is thinking of what to do with Mary, we find the Lord appearing to Joseph in a dream. I, I had tried to think about it and I am amazed. When he, when, when he sees a dream and the angel is saying, you know what, we know what you are thinking. Isn't that amazing? That the Lord can know what our thoughts are. And the Bible says in Psalms 139 that even before our word gets to our mouth, it is known before the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So the thoughts that Joseph was thinking, they were known before the Lord. And they were not according to the will of God. And so God sent forth an angel to advocate for Mary. Because whatever Mary was carrying was of the Holy Spirit. It was not her own. It was of the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. And we find the Lord advocating for Mary. We find the Lord telling Joseph, no, 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 no. This is what you are planning, but that is not according to my plan. My plan is that Jesus will have a heavenly father and you are the one who has been chosen. Take your wife Mary and you shall bring forth a child and his name shall be called Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says his name shall be his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins what is the purpose of Jesus to save his people from their sins the purpose why Jesus came he came to save us from sin that was his purpose and we find that Jesus fulfilled his purpose Jesus lived on earth he grew up as a child. He feared the Lord. He walked in the ways of the Lord. He started his ministry. He was baptized by John the Baptist. He walked on earth healing the sick, delivering those that, are, that were captive. He walked on earth touching the blind eyes, opening the deaf ears, raising the dead. And finally, he fulfilled his purpose because his purpose Praise the name of the Lord. The purpose of Jesus. The purpose of Jesus was to save us. The purpose of Jesus was not those miracles that he was doing. It was not about him turning water into wine. It was not about feeding the 5,000 and the 4,000 with fish and bread. It was not about walking on water. It was not about riding on the donkey and people singing Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest. It was not about when he drove out people who were buying and selling in the temple. His purpose was the cross. His purpose was to die and save us from sin. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Jesus fulfilled his purpose. He came to destroy the works of the enemy. He came so that we may not remain slaves of sins. He came so that we may have a voice. We may be reconciled back to the Father. Now you can go before the Lord and call him Father. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That was the purpose of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says his name is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. You know, when we think about God and we think about his greatness and we think about how high he is and how exalted he is, sometimes it might be hard for us to relate with God. Praise the name of the Lord. But you know what? Jesus came. He was born of a woman. He grew up as a human being. Jesus knows what it means to go hungry. Remember him at the, at, at, at the wilderness when he was being tried? Why do you think the devil came and said, if you are the son of God, turn the, the stones to? Right. It's because he was hungry. There are times he could feel thirsty. Anything that we experience as people, as human beings, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus experienced it. He walked miles and miles and miles. 
So are you talking about getting tired? You're talking about fatigue? He understands what it means. Praise the name of the Lord. He understands what it means to be rejected. He goes to his own people. When he goes to Nazareth, he just performs few miracles by the laying of hands because the people are like, oh, that is Joseph's son. Oh, he is the carpenter. He is the one who made my bed. Oh, by the way, he made my dining table. Oh, what has he have to tell us? Despised by the people of his family. Emmanuel, God with us. He understands. Is it about repaying Evil with God. Jesus healed the sick. Jesus performed miracles. Yet they took him to the cross. Is it about betrayal? By his friend. You know I think about. Uh, I think about this. And I have blogged it in my blog. About Jesus and Judas. Judas was not just. An anybody in the ministry of Jesus. You know even in our organization. We don't just give anybody. The office of the treasurer. The money keeper. He has to be well known. He has to have a good record. <laughs> for him to be appointed in that office. So Judas was not just an ordinary guy. He was the one carrying the money for the ministry of Jesus. When they needed to pay something. Judas had the money. After Jesus meeting and they collected an offering, who took the money? Judas took the money. He's the one who counted the money. But the same money is the same money that he betrayed Jesus for. You're talking about betrayal? Jesus understands betrayal. And you know what? It was a betrayal with a kiss. Judas comes and kisses Jesus. You'd think it's hi or saying how are you long time buddy. No. It was a betrayal. So when we talk about Emmanuel God with us. We are talking about Jesus who understands whatever we are going through. Praise the name of the Lord. And he came so that we may not live alone any longer. So that you stop struggling on your own. His purpose is to be with us. Is to dwell within us. So that when you are walking like yes, uh, last Sunday we said. When you go to a place and introduce yourself. It is good to remember you have Jesus introduced Jesus too. Because he is Emmanuel. God. With us. Praise the name of the Lord. We are not alone. And then uh, number four. He came to fulfill the prophecy. To fulfill the promises that had been promised to the children of Israel. If you read the book of Isaiah. Like we were reading. You remember? And to us a child is born and to us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father and prince of peace that prophecy was prophesied years ago and other prophets had prophesied to the children of Israel that a son will be born of a virgin oh and Jesus the savior the savior of the world will be born Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm thinking about those people who lived in that era. They waited for the fulfillment of that promise, but they did not see it. Some were taken to captivity. They lived in Babylon. They still awaited for the birth of the Messiah, but they did not see it. But this prophecy was fulfilled in the time of Joseph and Mary. This prophecy was fulfilled in the times of Anna. And Simeon, praise the name of the Lord. Anna was a woman who knew the prophecy and she was windowed after getting married. Seven years into marriage, the husband died. And Anna decides to live in the temple to continue waiting for the promise of God and to continue praying in her expectation. Simeon too was somebody who knew about the prophecy. 
prophecy and he had told God do not let me die before I see the fulfillment of that promise praise the name of the Lord so these two people and many others are waiting for the manifestation of the promise of God and so when Jesus was born it was a fulfillment of the promises of God. And so today I want to assure you, as we understand the purpose of Jesus, understand that you also have a purpose. Amen. Just like Jesus fulfilled his purpose, I want you to understand that it is up to us to desire to fulfill our purpose and to serve the purposes of God in our generation. The Bible says of David too that after he had served the purposes of God in his generation, he rested with his fathers. And I declare today, I refuse to die before I fulfill my purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, I refuse to die I refuse before I fulfill my purpose. Amen. Yes, Jesus fulfilled his purpose. He came to save us from our sin. And we will fulfill our purpose. I don't know what is your purpose, but it is in the word of God. It is hidden in God. And you have everything that you need to fulfill that purpose. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And then this purpose comes with promises. And I have come to tell you that it does not matter how long the promises have taken. Before you see it fulfilled. If it was fulfilled in the time of Mary and Joseph. It shall be fulfilled in our days. I have come to assure you this morning. That the God who promised is faithful. Our God is not a man that he should lie. His promises are yes and amen. He does not say he will do and not do. His word does not return unto him void. Whatever he has commanded over our lives. Whatever he has purposed over our lives. It shall come to pass. Because it's not of our own. It is of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And number four, I want you to understand that you do not need to defend your purpose. You don't need to fight for yourself. Mary could have gone and started explaining to the people and tried to tell them it's not that I've been unfaithful. It is not because I'm, an, I'm immoral. He, she could have decided to explain to the people. But how can you explain to people all oh, conception of the Holy Spirit and it has never been heard of? How do you explain that to people? Praise the name of the Lord. But she chose to just trust in the Lord. She surrendered and said, let it be unto me according to your purposes. She just surrendered. I want you to just surrender. Stop fighting. Tell your neighbor, stop fighting. Yeah, stop fighting for yourself. Stop advocating for yourself. All that purpose, you know it well. Within you, you know. You've been called to do this. You exist because of this. You are in this country at a time like this for this purpose. You understand. You know. We find that the Lord advocated for Mary. Not only for words spoken, but thoughts that had passed over in the mind of Joseph. What a good God we serve. What a mighty God that we serve, who understands the thoughts and the intentions of men, who understands our words before they get to our mouth. This God will defend his purpose over your life. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When Joseph plotted to put her aside, oh, at night he got a dream. I pray today that everybody who is plotting against your purpose, oh, experience a visitation of the Lord the Lord telling them mm -mm, no don't touch her don't touch her don't touch her this is me this is my hand upon her this is me doing this this is my purpose praise the name of the Lord Amen. you know uh, the, 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 the Bible is so interesting I just remembered this the, the, uh, that Abraham and Sarah went to Egypt once and when they went to Egypt, Sarah was very beautiful. And sometimes when I read this, I'm like, I just wish I can see Sarah. If she was so beautiful at that age, until Abraham was afraid that they would kill him for her, that must have been real beauty. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, in those era, it was there was no makeup or anything. And 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 they lie and they say, you just say you are my 
Just say you're my sister. And, uh, and Pharaoh takes Sarah and gets her and puts her in the, in the palace to make her his wife. But guess what? <laughs> the Lord appeared and striked Egypt because she could not be touched because she was the mother of nations. There are countless testimonies of the Lord defending his purpose in the lives of people. Amen. It is up to us to continue connecting, soaking the word, soak in, read the word, understand what is my purpose. And if Jesus fulfilled his purpose, 33 years and he did it. By the time he went to the cross, he went down to, down to, to hell, took the keys, took power and authority. At the cross, the, the curtain of the temple was torn, giving us access to the Father. He did it. We can do it. I said Jesus fulfilled his purpose. We can do it. Praise the name of the Lord. And as we seek the Lord to know his purpose and to fulfill his purpose, let us know that we are not doing it alone. We have Jesus, Emmanuel, God, Amen. with us. Emmanuel, God, with, with us. us. Amen. Just stand on your feet. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want you to thank the Lord. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Just thank the Lord that he fulfilled his purpose. You know, at the Garden of Gethsemane, when he understood what he needs to do, it was so heavy. Sometimes the purposes that we have to fulfill are not easy. Oh, the Lord didn't say it's going to be easy. And we find Jesus praying and he even sweats, sweats of blood as he struggled with his will and the will of the Father. But eventually the will of God prevailed. He said, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. I pray in the name of Jesus that we shall fulfill the purposes of God in our generation. I pray in the name of Jesus. That that which was ordained and purpose concerning each and every one of us. It shall not be aborted in the name of Jesus. It shall not be cut off in the name of Jesus. It shall not be hindered or thwarted in the name of Jesus. We declare the word of God according to Job chapter 42 and verse 2. That now we know that you are God. And that your purposes cannot be thwarted. Your purpose concerning Jesus was not withheld. He surely came to save us from sin. We thank you, Lord. And we declare that each and every one of us shall fulfill their purpose for the glory, honor, and praise of the Lord's name. And everybody say amen. 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 Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Amen. Amen. We may be seated. I'm going to make a few announcements. I'm, I'm going to make the announcements too, even on the online for our people. Who are watching online uh, and I believe that God is going to bless us uh, we've been having the grief share group every Thursday and uh, this coming Thursday is going to be the, our last session our last class the 13th class and uh, we thank God for what he has been doing thank you for praying thank you for supporting because the first group we've had we have seen them grow we have seen them move and we have seen them get to the place where they can laugh again uh they can rejoice and they can pray again praise the name of the lord Amen. so let's continue doing that uh we're gonna start another group in the month of february uh so the registration is still online you just need to google uh grief share support group near me if you are within the 10 miles or 20 
let's say just 10 miles because within 25 miles you still find other groups that are hosted in other churches so uh you're welcome to join us you're welcome to continue even supporting this ministry it's a ministry to the community uh ministering to the people who are grieving and we thank god for what he is doing amen uh we sat down and we planned the calendar for the 2019 uh year it's the year of divine alignment. I will explain more and more come month of January what it means to be aligned, divinely aligned as we continue to serve the purposes of God. And uh, we had a time to uh, take some data, ask some questions concerning our youth service, which for some reason has not been going on. And uh, out, of the question, uh, out of the teens and the twins, we asked questions. We understand that uh, they would prefer to have the services in the morning. So instead of having the youth services Saturday evening, we'll be having the twins. They are, they are calling it the twins and the teens service. Saturday morning from 10 to 12. So if you're there, you're listening to us online, you're welcome to join us. If you have a twin, a twin is from the age of, the age of 8 to 12. And the teens are from 13 all the way to 19. We'll be having a, a service here for all of them. Doesn't matter the denomination. We at Glorious Power Church, we are a non-denominational church. You're welcome to bring your child and we're going to have a great time in his presence. Uh, yesterday we were speaking and we have, uh, we, we, we have something that is really coming up. And I believe that out of that service, great things shall be born. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, we are going to resume our Wednesday service, midweek service. So every Wednesday from January, uh, we had stopped uh, doing the Bible study. And uh, after having the meeting, we agreed we are not going to be doing it as a Bible study. We will have it as a midweek service. So for those who of us who have even been working uh, the 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 Sunday shifts and they have not been making it to come to church, we will have a midweek service every Wednesday from 7 p.m. Uh, all the way to 8.30. So you're welcome to join us every Wednesday for the midweek service. Uh, what did I forget? Uh, we had a wonderful, <laughs> I've been reminded, we had a wonderful overnight meeting here on Wednesday. Thank you so much for those who came. We spent the night here just praying and the Lord spoke to us in a great way. The Lord visited us in a mighty way. That night we heard, we saw people hear the Lord for the first time and somebody was like, I heard God. This is what God has spoken to us. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. And we are thinking that we're going to plan more and more of those overnight meetings so that we can continue just uh, soaking ourselves in the presence of the Lord and seeking the Lord. Amen. Our meetings, our uh, structured meetings, the women meeting, the ladies empowerment meeting is coming up the first week of February. Date one, two, and three. Uh, we have the guest speakers already confirmed. Uh, so you will see the flyers that will be out. Uh, the other structured meeting we have is the men. We we love our men. We love them. And we always hold our breakfast for them in the month of March. Uh, we thank God for even the speakers for that time. They are already confirmed. We have speakers for all those meetings. The flyers will be out. Praise the name of the Lord. And I believe that the Lord is going to continually bless us. The Women Ministers Network is still going on strong. We started a prayer line where the women just log in and pray. And, and also we decided we'll be having a, a day for the church prayers. Uh, last Sunday, we agreed that we'll be doing the prayer line on Tuesdays because uh, Tuesday is the only day that uh, we don't have other things going on. So we'll be having that prayer line on Tuesday. We are going to put up a flyer and the number. By the way, we got a good number where you don't have to put a pin. You just dial and you're in. Uh, every Tuesday from 9 to 10, we'll be meeting online for prayers. And I believe that we'll continue to grow for the glory and honor of the Lord. May the Lord God bless you as we prepare to give our offerings. And uh, for those who are online, uh, if you want to support us and uh, you want to uh, uh, be partners with us, you can just go to our website, Glorious Power Church, 
and uh, you are going to see a link on how you can support us, how you can donate, how you can partner with us, and the Lord is going to bless you. May God bless you. Shalom. Thank you.